Welcome to episode 22 of the Pregactive Podcast, as we debunk a whole lot of pregnancy exercise myths, along with Sarah Smith, osteo and clinical Pilates instructor, who is equally as passionate about helping women stay healthy and active through their pregnancy. So let's get right into a lot of common questions we get asked. Hi, I'm Karen, the founder of Pregactive, and through this Pregactive podcast, I'm going to help you to feel empowered, informed, and confident through your pregnancy and postpartum journey as we talk all things health, mind, and fitness. So very excited to have Sarah Smith with us today as we talk about pregnancy exercise and debunking some myths that are very common questions that we both get. Uh, But before we begin, Sarah, if you could just give those people who don't know you a little brief into what you do and who you are. Thank you, Karen. And thank you so much for having me on today. I'm very excited to be chatting about these topics that I hear so much about in my practice. Um, So my name is Sarah and I'm an osteopath and also a clinical Pilates instructor. And I work for a company called Beyond. Um, We're located in Melbourne and also down the coast. We've got four clinics. Um, So my interest in everything pre and postnatal has come a bit from my own journey and from seeing my beautiful patients go through their journeys through their pregnancies and then helping them to rebuild their bodies postpartum and just to keep their energy levels up um i did a pilates certification back in 2010 and before that i've always been really interested in how our bodies adapt to strength training and for me as a mother and working and having a physical job I've always done it and I exercised a lot through my pregnancy um, doing strength training and Pilates I did it up to 35 weeks pregnant with twins Um, so I really felt the benefits of um, having all of that exercise and um, the strength in my body it helped me with my labor and my recovery and yeah I've continued it on and I really promote it into all of my clients and people around me help them feel better amazing and pregnant with twins incredible <laughs> it, it is a, a lot of there is a lot of fear around pregnancy exercise uh, you know women get all excited about getting pregnant and then fear because they don't really know what to do and so often they stop You know, they they stop doing anything because they don't know what's good for them. And also, I, I know that this is a common question you get. People are scared to start something new in pregnancy. So let's let's talk a little bit about that. Yes. So I think that's one of the first things I get from a a client once they become pregnant or even when they start to think about becoming pregnant is what do I do exercise wise Um, can they continue to do what they're already doing or can they add anything on or start something new there's a lot of that fear in people that they have to stop everything when they're pregnant um, which is very untrue so exercise is really promoted during pregnancy Um, it's actually promoted you should be doing at least 150 minutes a week Um, throughout your pregnancy and even into postpartum as well and that can be broken up into five 30 minute sessions and it over the week and it can also be broken up into like 10 minutes a few times a day and doing that five times a week so it doesn't have to be go out do a full hour Um, you can break it up into what whatever your energy levels are going to be able to take In terms of what exercise to do, it's really dependent on what you've done in the past and what you enjoy and what you feel like your body wants to do. So it's important to listen to your body throughout your pregnancy, listen to your fatigue levels, listen to if you've got any aches or pains, Um, your body temperature is another big one. Um, Yeah, things like that. So if we break it up a little bit into, I guess, 
to exercises maybe that we shouldn't do quickly. Um, so the main ones, things that you want to be conscious of when you are looking at exercising during pregnancy is your um, body temperature. And so in terms of your body temperature, that's not sweating. It's a little bit different. So when you're sweating, that's just your body exerting itself. Um, however, if your body, temp if you feel hot in yourself, um, if it's a hot day, then the fetus is going to be feeling quite hot as well. So that's where you want to make sure you keep your body temperature down a little bit. Um, so if it's a super hot day, maybe avoid exercising outside and go in an air-conditioned space. Um, and the other exercise that people, that research has shown you should probably avoid during pregnancy is your hip training. So your really high intensity interval training, which is going to max, you know, you're going to your max heart rate in those exercises when you're doing them properly. So they're the ones that we want to avoid as well, because generally you want to, and we can go into more your heart rate stuff later, but um, you want to keep your heart rate sort of below that 80 to 90%. Um, if it's going up towards your 90%, that's your elite athlete. So we definitely don't want to be up there. And it's really important to note that, isn't it? That it's a, in terms of percentage, you say that because somebody who potentially is a little bit fitter, their actual heart rate, you know, they could go a little bit higher than someone else. And I think often, particularly pregnant women want a number, don't they? They're like, what can I go to and what's safe in that, that realm? And it's really important to remember that everybody is different and knowing your own body. And if you look at a, you know, a rating of a scale, say of, you know, one to 12 or one to 10 or whatever the scale that fit works for you, but say it's one to 12, you don't want to be getting to a 12, you know, push it back, you know, dropping it back. But, and I think this is important to remember, you don't have to be at a three no. through your whole pregnancy. And that sometimes people think, oh, I used to run and I used to go to a fit, a high fit classes and I used to do all this. And now I'm scared that if I stop doing this stuff, that I'm going to get really fat in my pregnancy and I'm going to be blow out once this baby comes and I'm never, ever going to get back to feeling fit like I was. And, you know, and I'm sure yeah. you have this come up too, is it, be reassured that if you do safe prenatal specific exercise, and that's why, you know, we both do things, you work one-on-one -on -one with clients and I have obviously the online program, but it's, yeah. it's designed there to help women get through and, and stay strong because that's important, but um, not fear that they're going to put on extra weight that they don't yeah. need and then not recover well postpartum. Is that something that you come across a lot? Yes, definitely. Um, I think a, a really good, if you're looking at how you measure your, um, how hard you're working, rather than going by, you know, uh, your, your heart rate monitor, because a lot of people do these days, if we've got smart watches and everything like that, we're all looking at them to see, you know, how high, high our heart rates are going. Instead of looking at that, go by, um, you should be able to maintain talking throughout your exercise. So they call it like a talk test. Um, and the other way you can measure it is your rate of perceived exertion. So our, if we're looking at our mo um, moderate activity levels, which is what's recommended for that 150 minutes a week, um, your moderate activity is where you feel like you could just continue it for quite a few hours your breathing might be a little bit laboured, but you're not huffing and puffing too much. Um, and you can still hold a conversation. Um, so if you're looking at a rate of zero to 10 or one to 10, and 10 is your maximum activity, and so you're really exerting yourself, we're looking at about a four to six on that scale. Um, you can do little bouts of going into your vigorous activity levels, which is like your seven to eight out of 10, but they're only short bouts and they would only be for maximum 30 to 60 seconds throughout your pregnancy. And I feel again, like that's when I walk up a hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a really steep hill and it's like, okay, I can get through this, but I'm not going to keep doing this for half an hour. <laughs> yeah. 
and to- your your levels are going to change throughout your pregnancy because your first trimester you're tired and then your third trimester you're getting heavy and tired as and you're getting that restriction in your rib cage so you're getting quite short of breath as well so you're going to feel like you're exerting yourself so much easier than what you were maybe in that second trimester when you were feeling really fabulous and you mm. have better energy levels Week by week, it changes so much and it's really important for women not to feel like they're failing or um, disheartened that their progression may not be looking like it's an upward scale because of the changes internally in her body, right? Yeah, that's totally true. Um, One of the things I love about doing the strength training and this strength training can be through weights and it can be through resistance training such as Pilates as well. Um, one of the things I love is that it's shown to increase your endurance. And when we're going into the delivery suite, when you are in labour, we, we need that endurance and we need a little bit of fitness to get us through the, um, the labour and the birth and it will also help with our energy postpartum for our recovery as well. Um, mm. And they've actually shown, like some of the research has shown that it helps with um, mums to have shorter labours and it also helps with having um, fewer complications, shorter hospital stays, and it can also help with some of the cardiovascular resistance for the infants once they're born as well. Um, so amazing yeah and then even feeding into postnatal recovery and postnatal um, fitness as well it's shown that women that have exercised throughout their pregnancy they're also going to maintain that fitness coming um, on the other side so postnatally as well and that's going to help so impressed Yeah, I was so impressed with that postpartum period of time because your body is so amazing and if you look after it and, and, you know, know what to do, then it can recover really, really well. Five months postpartum and I was feeling on top of the world and I thought, you know, wow, obviously it's it's an up and down um, roller coaster uh, because it's not always equal but it's so important to stay active in your pregnancy so important pre-pregnancy too so if anyone's listening and they're planning pregnancy uh, or not pregnant yet then 100% keep active because it's going to help you throughout life no matter what stage but it's it's really amazing and the research is so good that it backs it all up yeah I th- and one of the things I think is important to know pre-pregnancy when we're talking about that is you can start these exercises at any time. Mm. So even whether it's before you get pregnant or when you get pregnant, you can go and start some resistance training and start to strengthen your body even before you get pregnant. There is no harm, but you're not going to start at a level that someone that's been doing it for three years has been doing you're going to start at a level for you and you're going to start with some really foundation movement Mm. um and it's going to help you throughout your pregnancy doing these strengthening movements because it will help with your posture so it will help with all your postural muscles to keep you upright um to keep you managing your um your spinal curvatures which will increase as your tummy becomes bigger and pulls you forward And it's also going to help with even just your stomach muscles. So there's a lot of fear about working our stomachs throughout our Mm. pregnancies as well, which you probably hear. Um, So often people are so think that crunches and planks are the only abdominal exercises that really work and it's so not true. (laughs) There's so so many. So not true. And the core exercises in pregnancy are vital very vital they are um when you're in labor it's it's not your arms that push the baby out it's your core muscles your deep core muscles is what pushes the baby out so having them nice and strong and when we say core muscles people often just think of your you know your six-pack muscle down the front but we actually want to avoid using that too much 
And we want to use all of our oblique muscles, which is our side muscles and our deep muscles through the front of the pelvis. Um, so doing some exercises such as payless presses, you can do side planks on your knees. Um, you can do sort of some rotation exercises as well to help with the rib cage and the oblique little knee hovers on your hands and knees. They're all fantastic exercises to work your core, but they're not in, um, not gonna bring any danger to increasing your rectus diastasis, which is another fear that some women have is that the abs are tearing through the front, so to speak. And you, I'm sure, you, you know, a lot of people know stuff about this, but um, it is guaranteed throughout your pregnancy that you will get splitting of your rectus diastasis through the front. But some people will only have a couple of fingers width and some people will have, I, ha I had during my pregnancy, I could fit two fifths in my rectus diastasis when I was pregnant at the end with twins. Um, but because I had done so much of that strengthening through my oblique muscles um, and through my deep core, by the time I came out of hospital, it was back to two fingers. And so it can recover really quickly once you, if you keep those core muscles on the sides nice and strong. Um, and as, lo as well as doing all those oblique work, that oblique work, working our back muscles and our pelvic muscles is really important as well. Um, we have a fear in general that if something's painful, we have to stop everything. Do you find that with a lot of your clients? It, it's a fine line, isn't it? Because pain is not something that you want, particularly in pregnancy, and you do need to, to stop. But I often find that, you know, women have pelvic pain or backache, and so they think, oh, I better stop and I'll sit on the couch. It's like, no, that's going to be one of the worst things you can do and it's going to make it stay with you for longer. It's definitely not going to make it feel any better. So it's yeah, it's really important to know if there are niggles, what to do for them. Yeah. So if you do have niggles, you want to make sure that you are training with somebody or mm. following a Pilates um program of someone that is quite good at directing directing you in positions that will help with your pain um also seeing a healthcare practitioner to help mm. make sure that your body is in the optimal position um, so that it hasn't got those niggles and it might mean just adapting some of your exercises so if we're looking at uh, weight training in particular we might want to look at um, see if we're doing quite wide-legged squats and we've got pelvic pain with that, we might want to decrease the squat so it's a little bit narrower and change um, how our feet are. And even just thinking about uh, which exercise, uh, which um, muscles we are activating can be really important as well. So you might want to just change, um, like making sure you're lifting through your pelvic floor to make sure that you're supporting the pelvic bowl. So that's generally having that feeling of that lift of the vaginal walls up off the undies. So you're getting that nice little squeeze and that can help promote a bit more stability through the pelvis as well. Um, I think it's so important for women to um, be reassured that this is the reason that there is pregnancy specific exercise out there because when it comes to a general class or a general instructor that doesn't have the qualifications if you're trying to do a normal class and then do bits and pieces of or oh, don't do this bit but then maybe just just do this instead and and it becomes very bitsy and it becomes very much like oh I don't and you overthink it and then it becomes overwhelming and then you end up not enjoying it and then you don't go Whereas, and I know IQ and you would do, do the same, is IQ very much so that all of this is there but not to the point where it's confusing. And so you'll do a 20-minute Pilates online class with me and I'll have cue you through all of this and I've put you through all of these exercises that are good for your back, good for your glutes, you know, strengthening your core, cueing you the right way. And but you're not overwhelmed, and at the end you feel really good because 
the other thing to remember for women listening to this is now that we've said it's really important, you know, do some oblique work, don't just do oblique work. <laughs> don't just, and don't do it every single minute of every single day and think that that's going to be the solution. It's so important to have the overall view, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yep. Everything's connected and mm. you want to, not just the strengthening, but you want to also look at your mobility um, as well. So you want to make sure you've got good mobility through your spine, through the hips, through the shoulders. And you want to make sure as well that your back and shoulders are strong because you are mm. about to be carrying around a baby and breastfeeding a baby for many hours of the day, plus lifting prams, car seats, um, nursing, everything. So you want to really prepare your body for what's coming on after as well. Definitely. And that yeah. it brings me to the point of lifting weights. Um, and it's, we've, you know, touched on, we don't want to be doing high intensity stuff. You don't want to be doing heavy lifting. It's not going to be great for your joints, not going to be great for your pelvic floor. But I do remember being in a mums and bubs class that I was teaching and I told the class that I was pregnant. And in that moment, I was holding one of the babies because, you know, that's what I did. And there, after that, they were like, oh, don't lift anything. Don't hold anything. Like that baby's probably too heavy. And I was like, this baby's probably like four kilos. <laughs> you know, I'm lifting a 13 kilo toddler around. So let's talk about lifting weights in pregnancy. Yeah. So you, if you're going to start doing some weight lifting through your pregnancy, probably don't start too heavy. Start small. Mm. And as you go through your pregnancy, if you have been um, lifting weights and you're quite experienced, you might want to look at either dropping your weight, so reducing the actual weight um, as you go through. And again, this is listening to your body. You might feel really energized one day that you can do the same weights that you were doing. There is no, oh my God, we're 36 weeks pregnant. Let's just lift two kilos. That's it. There's no recipe for the same people. Everyone's going to be different. Um, and people are going to have different strengths throughout their body as well. So just keep in mind that as you go through, generally you don't want to go back, going back to that 80 to 90% of what you were doing. So maybe just dropping your weights back. So if you were lifting 10 kilos, maybe drop it down to eight kilos for um, whichever weight you might be doing. You might be doing like a squat, holding a dumbbell or something like that. Um, and you also might want to look at reducing, if something's causing you to be more fatigued or having a little bit more discomfort rather than just stopping the exercise completely you can look at it changing it so you can look at changing the range of movement um, you can look at incline if you're doing something on your back which we will talk about as well quickly um, you can incline a little bit as well so and then you could also just decrease the amount of reps you're doing or decrease the amount of steps that you're doing and changing things like that can help you to still do what you enjoy, but you might not be doing them to the um, full extent that you were doing prenatally. And that's it. It's focusing not on what the weight is and not necessarily on what the sets and reps are in terms of I need to get to this this end. It, it really is listening to your body through every single repetition and the day you know you might be 28 weeks pregnant and not have slept well the last couple of nights so then don't really? try to do the exact same um rep sets weight that you did last week yeah. and you know things have changed and and yeah regularly check in with your body so important yeah, it is I think one of the other things to quickly note as well is just with the, a lot of people have fear of going on their backs. Um, and there is a lot of research out there that is quite contradictory. Some will say stop from 16 weeks, some say stop from 28 weeks. Um, but it's really dependent, again, on the person. When you go for a scan in the hospital, you're lying on your back for quite a while. Um, but when you're doing your training, it's really easy just to modify an exercise and just you only need to elevate your head and your upper and or your upper body about 15 degrees and that will take pressure off um, the free vena cava which is 
what they're looking that might cause them trouble um, if you are lying on your back for too long. And just avoid lying on the back for over 60 seconds once you get into those later stages of pregnancy. So in that, the final parts of that third trimester, just avoid going on your back for more than 60 seconds maybe, and then you'll be fine. And your body will tell you as well if, if you feel like there's a danger. So you'll know. And there's so feel- many modifications that you can yeah. do for exercises that are on the back, you know, pelvic pressure, per- pelvic presses that are using a couch or a gym bench or a bed even they're a great alternative um you know to a lot of those uh, lying on the back glute exercises but you don't even there's so many exercises you don't have to do the stuff that's lying on your back to to be strong being in all fours like flip it over um yeah. that's such a good exercise for your back for your core for your glutes yeah. and there's such a variety within those yeah Definitely. yeah um something else you might just quickly touch on if that's okay is also yeah. um if that fear of having any incontinence through the pregnancy mm. as well yeah. so obviously with weight training there is a lot of pressure that increases in the intra-abdominal Um, area so in your abdomen and that's going to put pressure on the pelvic floor and if you've already got the baby putting pressure on your pelvic floor and then you're going to be bearing down putting more pressure you just want to be careful that we're not going to stress that too much Mm -hmm. Um, and this is where things like so whether when you're doing your weight training things where you really bear down so heavy squats heavy deadlifts even like heavy lat pull downs where you're really bearing down, they might cause some stress on the pelvic floor. So there's some exercise you might want to just change and drop the weight back a little bit and really focus on your technique and recruiting those muscles correctly Um, and really start to incorporate more of your Pilates type stuff and your pelvic floor work to try and help strengthen the pelvic floor throughout the pregnancy as well. And that will really complement your training. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, it's not a nice thing to talk about, but I think it needs to be mentioned, um, and we're not going to go into too much detail because it's not our expertise, but um, vaginal discharge is a thing in pregnancy. So if you are getting something on your undies and you're like, oh, no, and you start freaking out that your pelvic floor is not working, just be mindful that there is, you know, increased vaginal discharge and that that's not necessarily a a sign of uh, pelvic floor weakness. The other thing to remember is if you are having incontinence that um, by doing more pelvic floor is not always the solution because an overactive pelvic floor it can mimic the same symptoms as a weak pelvic floor. So it's so important to get checked yeah. um, by a women's health physiotherapist that's um, you know trained in this area. Just even a one session is really good just to give you that confidence back to know um, that you're doing it right. But as you mentioned, avoiding those exercises that are going to put a whole lot of extra intra-abdominal pressure that you can't regulate. Yeah, and the other things to be mindful of that will also increase that pressure on the pelvic floor is your running and your skipping Mm -hmm. and your high impact exercises. Skipping, skipping in pregnancy. I just (laughs) there's too many things that move up and down. I can't even imagine it. (laughs) Yes, Um, and there's but people still do it and people still run and and again Mm. it's. You're not going to start a running program once you get pregnant, but if you're already running and you want to continue running and you feel comfortable doing it, as long as you're not going over that um, into that full um, rate of perceived exertion, you don't want to be up in that 9, 10, you want to stay in that mild to moderate sort of activity level Then, and you feel great doing it, then that's okay. But if you do start to feel any incontinence or have any other problems, that's probably when you want to back off a little bit. It does put a lot of pressure on the pelvic floor. 
Mm, yeah, we did a, a whole podcast on running in pregnancy. So if there's anyone yeah. interested in that, head back and and go check that one out because it's so important to yeah listen to your body. And it's not to say you can't do it, as you just mentioned. Uh, definitely go ahead. But I would, if I were you, go and and seek advice from an actual healthcare professional that is. Is, is qualified and, and talks to a lot of women in the same situation because I feel like some people go, I don't know if I should do it. They go to their GP. The GP has, you know, a broad knowledge of lots of things but maybe not necessarily pregnancy-specific exercise and they say, yeah, yeah, go for it and then it doesn't work out to be the best, particularly postpartum for those women. So, yeah. 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 listening to your body, um, to your body and, and get advice yeah get quality advice, yes. quality <laughs> advice. exactly well thank you so much for all of that I feel like we could talk for hours because this is just our passion but um, I think that there's a lot of really good tips there and things just to be mindful of was there anything else that you wanted to mention before we wrap up no such a huge topic and it's mm. um it's just really important to educate people and promote them to feel good and be healthy and happy throughout their pregnancies um make and them a movement. beautiful time and yeah thank you so much for having me today it's been wonderful you're welcome thanks for coming pleasure what a great chat there with Sarah Smith. So important to remember staying active in your pregnancy is an important part of not only your pregnancy, but also your postpartum journey as well. As always, the show notes are over at pregactive.com.